More than 1,500 miles away from where George Floyd died, some 10,000 protesters in Orlando have made it clear they want change. Many protesters have been spreading awareness about violent and racist cops in the community. The conversation now seems to be that people are much more focused on, on how police hold themselves accountable. The Orlando Police Department has been doing violence to its citizens for years. Officer Fernando Trinidad is seen here apparently pushing a woman down the stairs. The video, uncovered by local six problem solvers, eventually led to Trinidad being reassigned to airport duty. He's still working and he's still getting paid for it. So really, there hasn't been any change as far as I'm concerned. This videotape was taken by Rebus Holloway's sister in March of last year, and it's the one internal affairs investigators also viewed. It shows Officer William Escobar allegedly punching Rebus Holloway, dragging him on the ground, kicking him while Holloway was handcuffed. The state attorney's office filed charges of battery and perjury against Officer Escobar in January of last year, but OPD's investigators said no probable cause existed to charge him. Yeah, brother. Nine months later, this cell phone video is still tough to watch. It shows Orlando police officer James Wilson straddling and punching a homeless man by the name of Terry Johnson. Wilson claims Johnson was resisting arrest. Get out of here. We reported extensively on calls for Officer Robert Shellhorn to be fired after this scene outside the Parliament House back in 2017. Time to go, savages, go! It's not the only time he's used the term, calling black people savages and athletes thugs on Facebook. But union protections kept him on the force. I watch you doing a wheelie across the roadway. Just moments before, Meyer's body camera video showed him tasing the 19-year-old who was on a bike. An investigator documented the rider's injuries, noting how he fell on his left shoulder, which he recently had surgery on. A second bicyclist. I didn't do nothing. Get down now. What? Hit him on. Lando police officer Dennis Turner arrives at Lucius and Emma Nixon Academy and he arrests six year old Kaya Roll. Let's go. She's eight, isn't she? She's six. Now she has broken the record. Let me go. No. No, help me. Okay. Please, no. Now, I spoke with Turner tonight. He told me that he has served his country and his community for more than two decades, and he says he is proud of his accomplishments. I don't think I've done anything to be detained for. Do not reach into my car. Do not reach into my car. Stop. Stop. Hey, park your car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Orlando is not exempt from excessive use of force. Orange County is not exempt from it. It's, this is not just a Minneapolis thing or New York thing. This is something that's happening everywhere. This website, mappingpoliceviolence.org, lists Orlando as the fourth deadliest city in the U.S. for police encounters per capita. Those numbers to me are not that staggering based on the number of arrests we make and based on the force used. I think our officers have been trained very well in our department and I don't think that that we use force uh, more than other departments. Of course OPD believes otherwise um, but numbers and statistics I mean they're there for everybody to review. Jonathan Mills, officer OPD. He was given the Officer of the Year Award. He has had multiple excessive use of force complaints. I posted his picture on my Facebook page one time, and I cannot tell you the number of community people right here in Paramore who began to say, oh, I hate him, or oh, he stopped me for no reason, or he arrested me, or he lied on me. This afternoon, a Citizens Review Board is hoping to change the Orlando Police Chief's mind when it comes to an officer accused of excessive force. The board is sending a letter to the chief about Officer Jonathan Mills. It is not a board that can take action specifically themselves. All they can do is recommend action, and right now they're recommending action based on one particular officer. I realized that I had seen his name a number of times being on the board. 
And it just made me extremely uncomfortable. Why is he coming across? I've been on this board, you know, three, four years. Why does his name consistently keep coming across? And it really pissed me off at the last in-person meeting that we had when a member of the public came and talked about his interactions, particularly with youth in the Paramore area where he patrols. And at that point, I was like, his name has come across our desk too much. I would like for him to be terminated. Officer Jonathan Mills' brutality has been going on for years. October 2013, Mills tases and body slams an unarmed 57-year-old black man. Court records show Officer Mills detained a man named Louis Fedrick in this parking lot on Washington Street near downtown for suspicion of driving with a suspended license. Fedrick had his hands up when he questioned why Mills detained him, to which Mills responded by tasing him twice, body slamming him to the ground, and twisting his arm while handcuffing him. Mills arrested Fedrick for resisting an officer without violence and driving under a suspended license. August 2014, Mills sexually assaults a black man during a traffic stop. Officers Paul Griffith and Jonathan Mills were on the lookout for a black male in a gray Toyota when they pulled over a silver Nissan near the intersection of OBT and Colonial. The officers realized that the individuals in the car, Clinton Fair and his friend Nathaniel Rivera, were not the suspect they were looking for. The officers decided to keep investigating and asked to search the car. Fair said no, to which Mills ordered him to step out of the car and put his hands on the roof. Mills began searching Fair's person, grabbing and pulling his genitals. Fair instantly objected and said he did not consent to the search. Mills forcibly continued, claiming Fair was hiding something in his anal cavity. He handcuffed Fair, walked him to the patrol car, and penetrated him with his finger. Finding no contraband, Mills released Fair and his friend. By Mills' own admission, he had no reason to suspect there were any drugs on Fair's person. The city actually paid $130,000 in settlements for the lawsuits of Louis Fedrick and Clinton Fair. January 2016, Mills shoots a 17-year-old black teenager in a moving car. The officers on OPD's special tactical unit say they saw the white charger backing in at a shopping center after midnight a week ago Saturday and noticed the driver was not wearing a seatbelt. You can see Officer Jonathan Mills, who's wearing the body cam, get out of his truck and approach the car with his gun drawn. Stop! The driver kept moving, then officers started striking the windows with their batons. The, the driver backed away from the officers, backed right into a parked car, then peeled out. He fired three more rapid fire shots as the car took off. Mills claimed he believed the car was coming for him and he shot in self-defense. Even if this were true, wouldn't it make more sense to dodge than to shoot at the driver? Former OPD chief Mina said so himself when he banned shooting at moving vehicles a few months after this incident. Although Orlando police have notoriously not followed the policy in recent cases. March 2016, Mills makes racist and demeaning comments during a Paramore traffic stop. You're watching traffic stop video from the camera worn by Orlando police officer Jonathan Mills. Sit down. As more officers arrive, Mills is heard mocking nearby residents in the low income neighborhood. Dude, I don't know how it's bigger than both these buildings. Yeah, you're sad. That hairdo said. An internal investigation found that Mills' conduct violated department policy. The office of Chief John Mina told West 2 News he's reviewing the recommendations and may or may not take any action. The case against the driver in that video was dropped, and she was never, then, or before, or since, arrested for any crime. September 2018, Mills is awarded Officer of the Year. What's really egregious is he was praised for his initiative to seize drugs when this is precisely the excuse he used to sexually assault Fair as well as other incidents of excessive force. Beyond Mills, the war on drugs since its inception has been used as a racist and political tool to over-police and criminalize black communities. December 2018, Mills assaults a black man eating potato chips crossing the street. Three months after the honor, these photos capture the moment he tackles D'Angelo Stevenson, a suspected drug dealer who is not resisting. This is body camera video released in March of an arrest of a drug suspect whose charges were later dropped because of the video that documents an arrest by Orlando officer Jonathan Mills. Ah, Stop resisting. Investigators say Mills approaches Stevenson, immediately slaps a soda can from his hand, claiming he stuffed crack cocaine in his mouth. The officer only found a bag of potato chips and threw Stevenson's cell phone out of apparent frustration. 
five months later in a separate incident, Officer Mills received a reprimand for harassing a teenager arrested on an ordinance violation. The young men Mills harassed were some of the teens that New Image Youth Center cares for, a self-described safe haven in Paramore for Orlando youth. We received a phone call from a mother. She said, I really need you up here. My son has been arrested. He's been detained, and I don't even know what he has done. One of our staff members who was here at the time with us, I had her to come with me, and she's not black, she's white. And I said, hey, could you come with me just in case that my voice would not matter with OPD police officer in Paramore. So when we got there, there were two African-American mothers who were asking the officer why were their sons being detained who were both on the ground at the time with handcuffs. The mothers were being ignored. It was more of, I don't have to tell you anything. Get back, stay back. I asked the individual who was with me, was there a possible chance that she could go talk to the officer? He began to answer her in a manner that was totally different from how he was talking to the biological mothers. He was referring to another officer when he made the statement, I hope he runs. Well, what did that mean? What if he did run? Because technically he wasn't under arrest, right? So if he wasn't under arrest, what if he left the scene? What if he were trying to get away? What if he did run? Does that mean that we'll be sitting here talking about the death? of one of these young African-American men. One of those people that he was talking to was one of my youth. Um, and it was a complaint that he grabbed his hand and you know started talking down to him and they were in front of a liquor store. You have to understand, this is paramount. The liquor store is the only place they can hang out and you know do whatever they do. And when a park, there's how many parks that you know kids can go and play and, and, and have fun or there's Xboxes and Playstations in the crib because of money, their family has the money to buy them and provide them such. They don't have that luxury. What is wrong with standing outside of a liquor store? There is no law that I'm aware of, of an underage person not buying liquor, not inside of a liquor store, but just outside. Now that's loitering, maybe, but the owner didn't call him. <laughs> the owner of the, uh, uh, the shop didn't call him. If we continue to praise those actions, that's when we get murders. That's when we get an officer, oh, he had, I thought he had a gun, you know, I'm scared. All of them have complaints from my youth. They're scared to call the department to complain about them. So why would you call the police on the police? You know, they're scared to call the internal um, affairs. They're scared to call them because they know that if you call these people, complain about them, they're gonna automatically know who complained about them based on what they hear and then you become a huge target for them, a much huger target. And then that's where the violence starts because you have no home to go to, to escape them. This is a racist cop. This is a racist cop. People don't want to say that, but the Orlando Police Department have a racist cop and his name is Jonathan Mills. Chief Furlone told me today that despite what's in this report filled with photo proof, he has confidence in the qualities of this police officer. Explain to us how somebody like Jonathan Mills could still have a job with the Orlando Police Department. His conduct has not risen to the level where he should be terminated, but obviously he is going to have to understand that that's going to be something that he's going to have to think of. And then for him to be named Officer of the Year, you know, that was very, very startling to me. So you mean to tell me out of all the officers that are on the force, Officer Jonathan Mills is your choice for Officer of the Year? First of all, whoever whoever the nominating committee is, they scare me. No man who has been known for his racial slurs and his attitude should be, I don't care if it was five years ago, you should not be named officer of the year. Like we tell the kids, the choices that you make, it affects you and it follows you. Are you guys condoning his behavior? You know, for him to be officer of the year, that makes me feel like, okay, then if you guys are voting for him to be officer of the year, maybe more officers are like him and we just need to do, revamp the whole OPD office. When I first heard about defunding police, I'm thinking, oh, so you guys are trying to get rid of police departments. You know, I'm not sure if I'm in line with that, but when I looked more into it and realized that they're saying, let's take some of the funds away and just reinvest into the communities that these officers are policing, I can get behind that 100%. That's absolutely okay with me. Especially if you're just throwing away funds like that to keep a bad officer, 
nah, give me that money. Let's go do something else with it and get rid of him too. You're now saying to us that, okay, well, we have so much money that we'd rather just go ahead and shell out 150 or $130,000 and keep this officer because that's chump change for us. So, okay, let's take some of your money away then. Since that's chump change for you guys, let's take some of that money away and reinvest that into the community and maybe we can do a better job ourselves. If Officer Mills is a representation of the o OPD, then there's a serious problem. We're coming for your job, bro. Um, because you can't use your power and your badge and your gun and your cuffs and your mace and, and, and your handcuffs anymore as a weapon of oppression. You can't use that as power anymore. I'm done with it. Everybody's done with it.